So I'm going to show you five labs that you really need to get done immediately and actually a few other labs. It's going to be done cheaply and with this information you can get this done this week. You can even notify me via YouTube comments that you got this done and your life will definitely change. I kid you not, that's not exaggeration, that's not hyperbole. These are five labs that I want you to ingrain and that you can get done cheaply for yourself. You don't need doctor's permission. This is what's happening now is take some responsibility, take some power into your own hands and do these changes, okay? So I don't want to overstate that, but this is something you can do. It's very actionable information. So five labs you should do immediately. Did you hear about the immediately? Okay, because they will show you your most important personal medical data that you will need to address, and it's without going on medications. All right then, what to do about the ultimate big fat lie that is in your food today about obesity oil? You bet, obesity oil is the number one killer. What can I say? All right, my goal is to have you value your own lab data, to make data-driven decisions on your own health. We are not a pack of lemmings that run around in some sort of berserk fashion. We can be rational and get some data and make your own decisions. Your situation is not like my situation and vice versa. But we can do similar labs and go, you know, I see where I can do a few things that will make a profound difference in your health. That's the point here. I hope you believe that because it has the power to change your life quickly. How the right lab work can make a tremendous difference in your health, your weight goals, your physique, your mental clarity, your longevity, and your quality of life. These labs will help you lose weight dramatically should you need to, and will show you what to address for your weight loss. How the food industry has been keeping this a secret from you, starting with the story of the Sydney Heart Health Study. You're gonna hear more about that later, of 1973, but re-examined in 2013 that caused a rather profound crisis for the better. Okay, so what are these labs? These are the five labs, or actually more than the five labs. If you, if you did nothing else but this, I swear you will have some power in your hands to then make a change on primarily what your food choices are gonna be. You can do make it real complicated or make it real simple. It's gonna be real simple. Okay, so what this is is the omega-6-3 ratio. It also is included the omega index. You'll hear both of these individually, and they are different. The omega-3 is just about omega-3. The omega-6-3 ratio is very important because 100 years ago, maybe a little over that, the ratio for all of humans was one to one, was one to one. Right now, it's anywhere between 15 and 25 to one, and I've seen over 25 to one. That's huge. That's very pro-inflammatory. That's obviously due to the food that they're eating. They were unbeknownst to them that it was this situation. So they're not guilty of it, but once they know that this is a situation, that's why I'm talking about go get these labs on you now, today, this week, to find out what these numbers are for you. Don't say, oh, I wish I could lose weight. Gosh, it just doesn't seem to work for me. Take some time and get this done and I'll show you how to do it. So you have arachidonic acid, DHA, EPA. I also recommend these other four labs and it's, this is gonna be very cheap, but these are very focused and very helpful. This is going to determine your degree of insulin resistance. It's a big deal and these two are gonna to go together and I'm gonna show you how these two panels, we'll call them, these are hardly a panels, they're so small. Um, go together. So these four labs will help you determine your metabolic health, the triglycerides, the high density lipoprotein, HDL, insulin, and glucose. Most of you have probably heard of this. This certainly doesn't start any earthquakes about this, but how much of will these cost? Not much at all. Uh, let me show you. Okay, so anyone can get these labs done at a variety of companies. Right now, I'm using or making available to you. It's not through me. It's just through a link that I have. I get no financial kickback on this. Wish I did though. Um, and it's in the description of this video. So it's in the description of the video. There's a link. You can look up where these, first of all, how much it's actually going to cost you. I put down $26. It may be more. It may be less. It varies where you live in the United States, continental United States. going to be more in Australia. I don't know about Australia. In Alaska and Hawaii. But these are very important. Triglycerides are very important. Now, you can come back and read this slide. I'm not going to go through it, but it just breaks down the cost of all this and why it's important. So for 26 bucks, do it. There'll be a phlebotomy fee in addition to that. So add, say, say it's $10. Okay, this is the omega-6 panel. I showed you that. The cost of that is $35. let us say it's going to be more. Some people have gotten back to me and said, oh, it's more than you thought. This is not etched in stone. Things changed. Even if it was twice this, it would be a steal. I don't think it's twice this. Get it done. Say, so what will they show us? They can determine whether you are insulin resistance 
or whether you have NAFLD, which is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I had a patient call me from 20 years ago. I haven't talked to you. And uh, she was saying she's been diagnosed with this and she didn't understand what it was. She said, you know, why do they call it non-alcoholic? And she was just seeing me to find out if she should still take this one supplement that I recommended her taking 20 years ago. That had nothing to do with it. But that she was diagnosed and she was heavy and had no idea how important this was to her, the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So if you're overweight uh, because you haven't been eating, you've been eating the wrong kind of fats, this has made you overweight, the obesity oil. So where to go to get these done? Quest, uh, the retail part is called Ulta Labs. You don't need doctor's permission to do that. You can just go and get it done, find out where in your area there's an Ulta Labs slash Quest. Um, it has to be Ulta Lab authorized lab, which there are plenty of, and you can see a whole map of the United States. Also, I order from LabCorp now through the people I work with. I find it's faster and actually a little bit cheaper, and I like the fact they have linolenic acid in their Omega-6 panel, which they don't have in the Quest. So back to your Omega-6, linoleic acid, otherwise known as obesity oil, hibernation oil. Why is it called hibernation oil? It's because the hibernating mammals like bears and groundhogs and wolverines and whatever else, they have to eat a lot of berries, a lot of fruits and so on, and a lot of not just fruits, but all sorts of plant matter that are high at that time of the year in omega-6. And so the omega-6 changes their metabolism from burning those calories they're eating to storing because they're going to go to sleep for three to five months and they need to pack on the fat. They need to pack on the fat and that's going to be their energy while they're sleeping, hibernating. Humans don't go to sleep for three to five months. We don't need to pack on the fat. So there's a big difference there. So, but it's added to our food now. And so it's treating us like hibernating bears. Okay, so there's the panel. Linoleic acid is not always included if you get it from Quest. The Omega panel, why are we looking at this again? I'm gonna show you something extraordinary. I kid you not, I'm gonna show you something extraordinary. So please pay attention. All right, this is actual results. So I took about 14 people out of the people I work with. What I did is that I arranged these from highest to lowest. There's gonna be a page one and page two, highest to lowest of the omega-6 to three ratio. Omega-6 to omega-3 ratio. What's interesting here, the lab reference says, well, it's normal between, call that six and 22. It's not normal between six and 22. Normal and healthy is one to one. Normal and healthy is one-to-one. -one. If you want to be fat and obese and pack on the fat, then yeah, be 20-to-1. It's just a dumb thing to do. So everything is keyed off this top row. So everything we're going to talk about after this is going to be keyed off of the highest omega-6 to the lowest omega-3 ratio. So under this is independently just measured the omega-6, the fish oils, if you will, the EPA, DHA. And that reference Again, that's you want that as high as possible. I would say over five is more my goal, but getting it higher. So these are pretty low. So notice, obviously the ratio has to be low in omega-3 and it's also high in omega-6. But you'll see the numbers climb that way as they decrease. What I want you to see is the highest number here correlate with the lowest number there, correlates with the highest risk down here. What is this risk talking about? That's basically heart disease heart attack, heart disease, high inflammation, and all the things that high inflammation will give you, but primarily they're referring uh, that to um, heart attacks, coronary arterial disease. And this is page two. So page two is, picks up the numbers where we left off, and you can see there's, these are declining here, but what I want to show you is these surprises coming up. Just get this down. Lower going here, your risk goes low, low, low. So with the lowest ratio is your lowest risk. Also know that your Omega-3 is climbing. Look at these people over here from, we'll call that seven, 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 five, seven. These are fairly high omega-3 and pretty low omega-6. You'll find their omega, their arachidonic acid is going down and, but certainly their collective risk is going down. So this is the bigger picture. I'm not going to blind you all with it, but the reason I call it a big fat lie is because they put this oil so the idea is that we needed to add more polyunsaturated fats to our diet and drop the saturated fats. Started in the 50s. you hear more about that in a second. So that's vegetable oil, especially safflower, sunflower corn, corn oil, and soy oil. They left that out. And they're saying, well, it has some omega-6 because omega-6 is fine. You need it. No, you don't need. You need a little bit of it, and you get that through the food you eat. 
uh, natural, whole food sources of food you eat. So the big fat lies, you need a lot of this, stretching the truth a bit too far. And the omega-3, they're saying, oh, we got that covered. You don't need to have fish oil or EPA, DHA. You can have plenty of what they call ALA, alpha linolenic acid, and you get that through soy, most of through the beans they're talking about. Soy bean oil, a canola, walnut, flax, and chia. And there's some value to uh, certainly flax, but not so much to the others. Uh, canola, for the most part, is a GMO. You can get some uh, organic. And if it's organic and pressed, then that would be okay. That'd be like olive oil. It's called the poor man's olive oil, by the way. But you need about 18 to 20 times as much of this kind of food to get the amount of omega-3s that you actually need. This is the omega-3s that we need, the EPA and the DHA. And so you can get that directly from fish, from oily fish, from krill supplements, whatever, but fish. Think of seafood, in general, seafood. And there's a lot of archeological and work showing us that basically we evolved along the shore. And for the 199,000 years, we were shore people. It was the fish, the fishermen brought in the bulk of the food that we needed. So recommended additional determine your degree of insulin resistance with these four triglycerides, HDL, insulin, and glucose. Let's put these together. Now, remember, now we're looking at this particular panel with the triglycerides, HDL, insulin, and glucose, and we're gonna show you your insulin resistance, but I lined it up with these people strictly based on their highest omega-6 to low omega-3 ratio. Highest omega-6, that's all you need to know. Highest omega-6 correlates with everything correlates with all the problems. So this would be fascinating. So triglycerides, it correlates with the highest triglycerides. So they're taking a lot of triglycerides would be carbs, would be, we'll call them carbs. And so in that is where you get the omega-6, especially if it's processed foods, and that sort of certainly correlates. Their HDL is pathetically low. You really want it around 100. This says, oh, over 40, 100. Get up to 100. And what about insulin? Look at this. Insulin, you want two or under. That's, these are, 16, 52, 26, 20, 24. My gosh, it's not until you get way down here that remember, we're going down, we're decreasing the omega-6 ratio as we go to the right. So as we're going to the right this way, notice the numbers improve. Here's what I wanna show you is that these are calculations we did on insulin resistance. So they call this the triglyceride glucose index. It's a way of calculating insulin re resistance. The triglyceride HDL ratio is the same. And the third one is what they call HOMA IR, which you look it up and you plug in the numbers of uh, insulin and glucose and you get your number. I didn't calculate them all. It was kind of redundant, but it was high, 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 pretty straightforward. But notice all these numbers, starting with the highest omega-6 number, correlates with the highest inflammation. Look at that. Wow. 6.3, 3.9, boom. But it starts to drop off as you go to the right. What else changes? Total cholesterol. The sickest people, the highest omega-6 to 3 ratio correlated with the lowest total cholesterol, just like was in the 50s and 60s. You increase the polyunsaturated fatty acids, omega-6, you will drop the cholesterol. That part's true, but it's not healthy. These guys are all, or women too, are all incredibly insulin resistant. All right, now we start moving down that way, getting better. So the, the cholesterol starts to get higher and higher and higher and yet the inflammation starts to go lower and lower and lower. So for these 220, these people would be told to get on a statin, get on a statin, otherwise you're gonna die in front of me in my office and I can't have that liability, your doctor tells you. No, really, That's that was thoughtful. And this guy has so much triglycerides in his blood, he can't even do an LDL, it's called, it's called lipemic, it's actually pink. It doesn't look like blood, it looks like pink, it looks like, I can't think of it. LDL, but also notice your LDL climbs as your, in, as your inflammation goes down. Let's look at page two, you'll be floored. We're just picking up where we left off. Triglycerides are now going down. This one's an outlier. Remember, it's locked in on the omega-6 to three ratio. Okay, down, 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 what do we find? We find that total cholesterol is going higher and higher and higher, and the inflammation is going, this guy was a little odd, is going lower and lower and lower. So the highest cholesterol, 362 total cholesterol, he has a 0.03 inflammation. And his LDL is 260. Wow, his doctor would be apoplectic. And I know his doctor, and the doctor is apoplectic. Too bad, he ought to keep some spreadsheets. How'd, we, how'd this happen to us? Any guesses? Maybe processed foods, Coca-Cola? Yeah, 
Comfort food of last two years due to the pandemic. These are just oils ranked by the highest omega-6, linoleic acid. So you had safflower, it was used by the Australian study, sunflower, corn, cottonseed, nobody eats cottonseed, though it is in your food a lot, soybean oil, etc. The lowest is obviously coconut oil that's higher in saturated fats, palm oil, olive oil is a uh, oleic acid. But wait, there's a story here you have to hear first. So back in the 50s, there's a guy named Ansel Keys, who's man of the year for time, and um, he was not a medical doctor. I don't know how he got all this fame, but uh, he's the one who developed the K-rations, that's keys for K-rations of World War II of all the soldiers. And he had a thing about increasing polyunsaturated fats, drop the saturated fats that would get rid of heart disease because Eisenhower had four heart attacks while he was in office. So saturated fat, the cholesterol did drop, but he tended to cherry pick his data. And this is his theory, saturated fat cholesterol in the diet led to elevated cholesterol in the, in the blood and give you a heart attack. And that was not true. And so Keyes is back again with the same shenanigans. He faked the results of his first study, the seven country study, now fakes by omitting vital, vital data for the second study, the Minnesota coronary experiment done in the mid seventies with the one in Australia, concurrent with the one in Australia. They just kind of like misplaced the data. And if it wasn't for this one guy you're gonna meet in a second, we'd not know about that. So this was the basis for all the nutritional guidelines in the United States, consequently in Australia, in New Zealand, in Western Europe. It was post-World War II, and they thought, let's do what the Americans do. They just saved our lives. Let's, you know, absolutely believe them. And they just swallowed the wrong information for too long period of time. Okay, this is the summary of the coronary study, the Minnesota coronary survey. And it basically said that, well, yeah, cholesterol went down a little bit. Not much. <laughs> 45 years later, after these studies were completed, the missing data was discovered and then recalculated to say, so what would the conclusion be of these studies if we looked at all the data? You know, like studies are supposed to do. That's why when you start quoting studies, you don't know how they were done. You don't know who they were funded by. And you don't even know if there's a correlation between what they set out to study and what their conclusion was, unless you really know how to read a study. In 2013, the Sydney Heart Diet Study is seen in a completely different perspective. The medical and the medical industrial complex was caught bearing the truth about the obesity oil for over 40 years. And it has kept it a secret until now, until this was discovered in 2013. Okay, what you're about to see is a video from the CBC, and you no longer have access to this. I haven't downloaded and put it on my own computer. It's amazing, amazingly innocent. And it says, what the heck? You really sort of looked at these studies and said, we're going in the wrong direction absolutely going in the wrong direction. I hope you watch this and there's two people you're gonna meet and I'll talk to you. It's challenging what we thought we knew. For decades, we've been told that vegetable-based oils are far better for our hearts than animal fats, but that may not be the case. Our health reporter, Kelly Crow, explains. The oil aisle is already complicated and now there's a new concern. Vegetable oils with omega-3 also contain omega-6, and there's evidence omega-6 might increase the risk of heart disease. There's really no indication of benefit and a, a uh, substantial signal towards increased risk. That evidence is more than 30 years old, but it wasn't discovered until just this year when researchers took a second look at an old study. Back in the 70s, a group of men with heart disease were asked to eat more vegetable oil. And although their cholesterol levels went down, their risk of death from heart attack went up. According to this study, it looks like the omega-6s on their own could increase your risk of coronary heart disease. The oil used in the original study was safflower, which contains mostly omega-6, like corn and sunflower oil. That high level of omega-6 wasn't noted at the time, because back then, all unsaturated oils were considered the same. People just ran with all the polyunsaturates are good for you. So therefore, each individual one must be good for you. That turns out not to be true. But this comes just as Health Canada has approved a new health claim, linking an increase in unsaturated fat with lower risk of heart disease a decision that comes at the request of the vegetable oil industry. The concern is this, by eating more unsaturated fat, people will also ingest more omega-6. And although it does lower blood cholesterol, it might also increase inflammation and damage to coronary arteries. There should never be a health message 
or a health claim that omega-6 fatty acids lower the risk of heart disease. There's absolutely no evidence to suggest that we should increase more of it. So what does the evidence suggest? They have to decrease the intake of omega-6 and increase the intake of omega-3s. Back here in the grocery store aisle, what is a bewildered consumer to do? Well, the experts say there's only one option, become oil literate, learn your oils, and make omega-3 and omega-6 something else to look for on the label. Kelly Crow, CBC News, Toronto. So these are the people that you met in the video, and they are profound. First of all, nothing could happen without this woman right here, without this person right here. And so this is Dr. Artemis Anopoulos. I just want to say I've talked to her a couple times on the phone at length, long conversations, both over an hour. Um, and the second conversation we made into a podcast. And so if you're interested in really going deep about her whole life has been spent on omega-3 and omega-6 and now, uh, and now over the last 40 years and now about uh, genomic interfaces on a per person. That's why it's called precision medicine and why you make these things on a per person basis, not these generalizations that everybody can do the same thing. And uh, she's a wonderful person. So because of her work, when I graduated in medical school in the 90s, her work was she had come out with a number of books all about omega-3 and this whole one-to-one -one ratio. Most people didn't listen. And in fact, that her work has been reproduced in other countries. I think they're in their seventh and eighth edition of those original books in the United States and never got beyond the first edition. If you're asking me, it was kind of suppressed. So Dr. Christopher Ramsden, who uh, was a physiatrist, same kind of doctor as my dad, physical medicine, medicine and rehabilitation, he took it upon himself to go back and saying, you know, maybe the other data is still there. He basically listened to the work of Dr. Artemis Sinopoulos and said, you know, that makes too much sense. And that would be such a, an amazing disagreement with the conclusions of these two studies. So he actually found people, relatives of the people who, were, who did the first research, got the the note cards in the garage and another one was the medical tapes, the medical tapes, the magnetic tapes, recomposited everything and recalculated the conclusion. Amazing. He's now almost MIA. He's, he's alive someplace, still works with the NIA, but he's uncontactable. Whereas, um, as I said, we've talked with uh, Dr. Sinopoulos and I hope you follow up. That's on the podcast called Keto Naturopath, which I do. It's just a little more candid to do a podcast that way. All right, this was basically from CBC, which you just saw saying, oops, how did this happen? Scientists don't always report everything they discovered. That's an understatement. Sometimes lose bits of data that can be packed up in a box with a bunch of old books and research paper and left in a garage in Sydney, Australia. And that means intriguing, puzzling finding that didn't make sense back in the day can slowly retreat into scientific oblivion. About to be lost to humankind for all eternity, except, for the, uh, except in the case that the phone rang <laughs> and a determined scientist from Bethesda, Maryland, that's Dr. Christopher Ramsden, having managed to track down one of the last surviving members of the research team and asked if he knew what had happened to the data set from the Sydney Diet Heart Study that wrapped up in 73. Luckily, this guy, can't pronounce his name, was a rat pack and he knew where to look in his garage. Amazing. This is such a big story. This is in Scientific America. Records found in dusty basement undermine decades of dietary advice. You know where you don't find this? You don't find this at Harvard. Here's the New York Times came out April 13th, 2016. This is actually about the um, Minnesota because uh, Christopher Ramson, after he reevaluated the Sydney Diet Heart Study, he then turned his attention to the Minnesota Coronary Survey and said, I wonder where that data is. And he did the same thing. And that also upended that conclusion. Amazing. So this is the uh, New York Times. And here's what was in the New York Times. I'm not going to read all this to you. You can come back and read this. But four decades old study, study recently discovered in a dusty basement. Um, several years ago, Christopher Ramson, a medical investigator at the National Institutes of Health, learned about the long overlooked study. Intrigued, he contacted the University of Minnesota in hopes of reviving unpublished data. Anyways, he found it and he goes through and he, then he recalculated this. He says, eating whole foods, unprocessed foods and plants may be one way to get the linoleic acid your body needs, but you don't need to add more. Then it happened again three years later, which is 1916, which I just showed you. Seriously, they just forgot to include the data. Oops. 
oops, and all these countries started getting higher and higher and higher and higher rates of heart disease and inflammation. Sent it all through the roof. This, this is the most catastrophic omission of data in terms of health consequences. All right, so here's that dateline very briefly. So back in the 60s, when we're all about, hey, animal fats are bad and uh, Ansel Keys, well, these particular studies were done. One thing I forgot, forgot to mention is that, doc, as you'll listen on the conversation that I had with her in the podcast, Dr. Artemis Sinopoulos, who is a medical doctor, she actually talked to McGovern and argued with McGovern. Amazing, just amazing person. Her, both her historical reference and where she was to witness what she saw. Okay, so that's the Sydney Diet Health Study completed and the Minnesota Coronary Survey completed, but they weren't reported on, only partial results. And they came out, said, when the Sydney Diet Heart Study and the Minnesota Coronary Experiment were completed, presented, and finally published with only some of the data from both of the studies. Most of the actual results were missing, were omitted completely, until down here came out that Dr. Christopher Rams had published it in the Business Medical Journal. You have to ask, why did he do it in the, bis the British Medical Journal and not, let's say, the New England Journal of Medicine? I think you know the answer to that. Dr. Christopher Lamson, Ramston, here's his two studies. He said the reevaluation of the diet heart hypothesis and the use of dietary linoleic acid for secondary prevention of coronary heart disease, how that they were both incorrect. This again is talking about, nope, it's not the case. So this was about the, uh, the Sydney diet heart study. And he said down here is that advice to substitute polyunsaturated fats for saturated fats is a key component of a worldwide dietary guideline for coronary heart disease risk reduction. However, oops, clinical benefits of the most abundant poly polyunsaturated fats, omega-6, linoleic acid, have not been established. In this study, substituting linoleic acid in the place of saturated fats increased the rates of death from all causes, coronary heart disease and cardiovascular disease. Amazing. So not only did they say, oh, well, it dropped it sort of dropped the cholesterol a little bit. They totally omitted actually more people died because of it, which is what I showed you on the data. And that's why it's so important to do a spreadsheet of data and going, look at these correlations. High omega-6 ends up being low cholesterol, ends up being high inflammatory markers. You need to know that. It's not real complicated. And here is the other revision that he did three years later of the Minnesota coronary experiment. The conclusion there shows the replacement of saturated fats in the diet with linoleic acid effectively lowers serum cholesterol, that that it does, but does not support the hypothesis that this translates to a lower risk of death from coronary heart disease by all causes. Ah, ah. How many people died because of that? those two bogus studies? You know, we can't say if it was done intentionally or not, but if they were that incompetent, well, how did they have those jobs? How did they dismiss half the data? Well, we can't figure it out. It's messy. I'm tired of adding it all up. <laughs> I quit. Let's just publish it. <laughs> yeah, really? Summary and conclusion. Available evidence from, from random control trials show the replacement of saturated fats with linoleic acid effectively lowers serum cholesterol but does not support the hypothesis. There you go. You can come back and read more of this should you want to. All right, let's look at the labs again to see if there's a pattern. Let's see if there really is anything to this revision of the data's interpretation. But this time, let's put both panels together. Omega panel, which we've, we've talked about, the cardiovascular insulin resistance panel, I'm calling them panels, but they're both very small. And then they have subsequent calculations, right? To see if there's a correlation. Yeah, let's find out. Okay, I know it's a lot of data. Here you go. There again, that you've seen this before. It's the highest omega-3, omega-6 to 3 ratio. There, all of this is locked in on that and it works to the right. Okay, what do we look at? There you go. Oh my God, it does correlate. What do we find? We put highest to highest triglycerides, high inflammation, bang, 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 bang. And let's go, this is just page one. We go down to, Here's the whole thing. Now we go way down the other side, we find almost no inflammation, 0.03, but we have cholesterol of 362 and LDL total cholesterol, 262. But you'll notice that his triglycerides, for some reason that data is missing, but his uh, insulin is 3.3, basically purpose, uh, uh, perfect. His glucose is 96, that's fine. Amazing. 
It's just amazing. That's what you get when you put the data together. So you don't have to be a genius to figure this out. You simply have to be, you know, as a physician, as a family practice physician, line this up and say, what does the data say? That's the point of having data so you can make a data-driven decision about your health. Okay, the highest omega-3-6 equal the highest inflammation equal the highest mitochondrial dysfunction. Holy cow. I just wanted to add, you know, if this is something that you're interested in about omega-6, about cardiovascular health, about insulin resistance, about obesity oil and all the treachery that's involved in it and how to change your, your health pretty dramatically and pretty quickly and pretty simply, then I would suggest that you look for this next video. You're really going to enjoy it. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.